Well, welcome to the Makeshift Studio, and I have something very exciting uh, to show you today. This is the brand new MacBook Pro. I have been waiting over a year and saving my nickels and dimes that whole time uh, to purchase um, a new laptop, and I'm very excited to have it here uh, in my hot little hands after only one delivery screw up <laughs> by UPS. Uh, so what this is, is this is the 16 inch uh, MacBook Pro uh, with the M1 Pro processor, 16 gigs of RAM uh, with one terabyte of hard drive space. Had a pretty strict budget of about $2,800, uh, so when I was evaluating going to the the 14 inch or the 16 inch or what to do, uh, this was the combination I landed on that I think is gonna work the best for me and probably the best, uh, I imagine, for most of you all out there as well. Uh, so I wanna show you around this one and then I wanna compare it uh, to my previous MacBook Pro, uh, which was the first gen with the butterfly keyboard and the touch bar. Uh, it's a quad core i7. I'll put the specs up on the screen on that one for you. Uh, you can see, uh, but I wanna kinda give a comparison because I spent pretty much the same amount of money uh, four or five years ago on that one as I spent on this one. Uh, so I wanna see how they compare uh, and one, run one quick comparison test uh, just to get an idea of what, if any, speed improvements we've seen. <laughs> if any, of course there's speed improvements. Of course, it's an M1 Pro! How exciting, I'm very excited. All right, but first I wanna start by showing you a little bit around this one. Um, some of the stuff you've probably already seen, uh, but just wanna give you uh, another overview of what's new and different in the brand new MacBook Pro. Well, here she is. Uh, and I'm still trying to figure out where exactly to stand to make all this work, so I invite you to bear with me. Uh, but one of the things that you will notice if you get your hands on one of these is it's much more substantial than the previous one. Um, it's definitely thicker. I mean, the, if you look at how thick the, uh, the pads are on the bottom, the feet, they're way more substantial. Um, I love this little addition of oh, the, uh, the name of the, and it, it, is, it is like embossed or, you know, like uh, it's in there. I mean, it's, 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 it's three dimensional. I want to say it that way. Um, I was also glad to see that there are still screws. Um, on the bottom of this, meaning that you probably can still open it up um, if you want to. I'm not sure what you'll find inside if you do, uh, but you can. Uh, one of the things that's clear um, with this model is that gone are the days of thinness at every at all cost. Um, this is substantially and noticeably thicker. Um, it's it, it feels a little heavier too um, than the previous mod generation model uh, that I already own, and I think that's a great thing. The MacBook Air exists. Um, you know, all those other things exist. If thinness is your is your desire, um, then then you can have that. Uh, versus, you know, if you want a Pro model, you want the Pro model. You want all the stuff. Um, and this definitely comes with all the stuff. Um, so actually, before we open it up, let's take a look at the ports. Some of this you've probably already seen, um, but yes, we have the return of MagSafe, which is super exciting. Uh, let me grab that real quick. I'll show you how that works. All right, so here we are, the return of MagSafe after a much missed absence. Um, if you're familiar with MagSafe, this is gonna look really familiar to you. It's still got the little light on, light on there that indicates whether it's on, green, red for charging, you know, all that kind of stuff. The, uh, the cable now has this almost uh, kind of fabric feel to it. It's like a woven kind of uh, thing around it, which, and it feels substantial, which is good. There's a lot of power moving through here. The one thing I did not expect was um, on the other end, it's still, USB C. Um, I have tried using this cable with uh, other USB C adapters, uh, like from my previous generation MacBook, and they work fine. Uh, my understanding is they don't deliver as much power as this does. This delivers the most power out of all those options, uh, but it, it does work, so you can. And I think what that also probably means is you're going to be able to buy just this cable um, at some point and plug it into maybe one of your existing adapters. Uh, Apple is continuing to only provide the uh, the the, the adapter on the, 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 the power adapter on the power adapter. Well, that doesn't make any sense now, does it? No. <laughs> the plug adapter on the power adapter. Uh, they're going to only provide that. Um, it is removable like they have been before in any of your standard. Um, if you've got a, 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 one of the actual cable kind of adapters, I have several of them. You know, we'll plug right in. They haven't changed that standard. That's very nice of them. Um, but it all just works, uh, which is great. The one thing I will say that I've noticed is that this is a no kidding around magnet. Um, I, I feel like this is a lot has a lot more holding force 
um, than the previous generations does than I remember them having. Uh, this one really takes a lot of ugh to get it out of there, uh, which honestly I think is a good thing. The other ones are a little too prone uh, to fall off. But that's MagSafe. It works great. It works as you expect it to, which is wonderful. Now on this side, you've got your MagSafe power adapter. Uh, you do have your USB-Cs as well. You can power this through USB-C. So if you're like me and you've got a, you know, a, a setup on your desktop where you know, you've got one of those breakout boxes where you know, your power and all of your additional accessories are coming in through a USB, one single USB-C, that will still work. It won't charge quite as fast as it will with the MagSafe, um, but it will work and it will charge. Uh, and of course, you've got your combo headphone out uh, and uh, microphone input right there. Great to see that. Uh, around front, not much to see. Got, you know, the, 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 the previous years where you had that little power light there, still gone, missed that. Uh, all right, on this side, you have your third USB-C. So you're down one, uh, you still have four, now you've got three, but you've picked up an SD card slot and you have picked up a dedicated HDMI out. Very, 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 very excited uh, about that. Very excited about the inclusion of the SD card slot. Um, th this can, this will bring back one of the features I loved um, from before um, and I actually tested it and the one that I have fits. Hold on, I'll show you. So what I'm on about is this little guy right here. And this was uh, an adapter for actually two generations ago, uh, MacBooks. And what it does is it lets you take a mini SD card, slot it into here, and then slot this into your SD card slot. And it is pretty much flush mounted into there. Um, and so that means you can carry around a bunch of extra storage um, with you wherever you go. Now this is SD card slot storage. It's not the fastest thing in the world, um, but if you want to load it up with like movies uh, and things like that to take with you on the go, um, you can, and that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, so if you, I'm, I'm hoping they, this one fits really, really well as it is, even though it's from the previous generation. Uh, I assume we'll see some additional ones coming out that are designed specifically for this laptop, but that is amazing. All right. So let's open it up. What I did was I went ahead, did a backup of my previous laptop and just loaded that backup onto here um, using, uh, you know, using a time machine uh, a backup. Now, when I do that, I bring over all the files and everything. Time machine will give you an options of what you want to bring over. The thing I don't bring over is system settings. Um, and, and I do that because the, uh, oh, got an error. Um, I do that because uh, sometimes, you know, throughout the life of a computer, you have to get it there and you get in terminal and you enter new things and, and make things changes to make things work. Um, and after a while, you kind of forget about all that stuff was. So this kind of gives you a, if you don't bring over the system settings, you get a clean slate on the operating system side, um, but you still get all your programs and features and everything on it over here. So here we are all opened up, ready to go. The return of the function keys. Now I know there are um, some touch, uh, touch bar lovers out there. I was not one of them. So I'm so glad to see the function keys going. Uh, you still have your uh, you know, fingerprint um, to turn it on and off. So you got touch ID is still there and it's great. It works wonderful. It works how you think it would. And this new keyboard, if you have the butterfly keyboard like I did, and actually I'm on my, I, I've had my butterfly keyboard replaced once already. Uh, this keyboard is a revelation. Oh my gosh, the return of like true mechanical, well, I mean, not true mechanical, but I mean, just, just the much, much better operation, much better throw. I mean, it is just amazing. Um, the, the touchpad uh, works great, just like it did before, um, just like you would expect. Uh, and, and on the whole, um, it's just, it's a really solid feeling machine. Um, and I haven't had to play with it much. I've only had it for, you know, a few hours uh, at this point. Uh, but so far, it is just, uh, it, it is substantive. It, it seems to be very responsive um, and it, it looks great and it feels great. Uh, the screen, I, I wish you could see um, how good it is. This screen is just that good. Um, and this is actually at about a medium brightness level right now. Um, you can, you know, up, oh no, I guess it's fully bright. Fully bright, this is the full, full brightness level. Um, but I, I was working on it about here and I got a lot of studio lights on right now. Um, I was working on it about like here, about medium lighting and I would have thought that was full lighting. Um, I was surprised when I hit that button that it wasn't. Uh, but it just, it is great, it looks great, um, it is amazing. So now we're gonna kind of push this over to the side here for a second and bring on my old school laptop. All right, so here they are, side by side. We'll go ahead and uh, turn up the screen brightness all the way to match. 
bring it up right there. So now this is obviously a 15 inch class machine. This is a 16 inch class machine. So you can see, um, you know, there, there are, you know, they, 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 but they surprisingly look physically uh, almost exactly the same size. And I'll put one on top of the other in a minute to show you. Uh, but they look practically about the same size. Um, it's, it's, I'm surprised by that. Uh, but obviously the extra real estate on the screen comes in by the reduction of the bezel. So you can see, you know, I never really thought of this as particularly thick, but oh my gosh, is this thin. I mean, this is just super thin. Uh, so the, uh, as far as like, you know, the size, length and width, uh, you know, or length and width and all of, of this, of the new one, it doesn't really seem that much bigger uh, than the previous one, uh, whereas uh, the difference really comes in, and, and you'll see on the thickness. So the screens, um, I will say uh, the new mini LEDs are amazing. You can kind of tell it's a little bit thinner um, than this one is. Um, the brightness is amazing. Uh, the screen quality, I mean, it's XDR, and I believe it. Uh, it's just impressive. All right, so let's just do a couple little comparisons here. All right, so here you can kind of see the difference. Uh, let me pick this one up. Uh, you start to see some of the difference in the thickness. Um, the new one is definitely thicker um, you know, than the old one. Um, if we put one on top of the other, um, there's a little bit, you know, maybe maybe a quarter inch uh, in every direction. Uh, but if you have a bag or something you're working with that, um, that fits this laptop, it will fit this laptop. It is not that much different. All right, so now the last thing I wanna do um, is a little bit of a comparison test. And it's gonna take me a second uh, to set this up and I'll show you what we're gonna do. All right, so here's the plan. Uh, both of these have had a clean reboot. They've both been plugged into power um, and they both have only run, the only thing running on both of them is uh, the app compressor. Uh, so what I've loaded into that is a copy of my previous review video on the Roadcaster. Um, it is a ProRes 422 file um, and I'm going to be compressing it into actually a, a custom, uh, a custom uh, video format that I use uh, for to make much smaller uh, copies of videos. The original file uh, that they're both gonna be chewing on is about about 100 gigabytes. So we're gonna see how long it takes each of them uh, to compress uh, that file into something smaller. And we will see if five years um, has led to some improvements. Obviously, this is one of those tasks that this one uh, was literally designed to do. Uh, so I'm hoping to see some pretty substantive improvement um, over the previous generation, but we shall see. What have you given us? Oh my, I, I knew there would be a difference. I had no idea it would be so much. Uh, if you didn't quite catch it uh, on that test, seven minutes, 20 seconds versus 24 minutes. Same task, same file, same conditions. Uh, now what's actually interesting too is um, even though using the same program compressor with the same settings, I have a profile I've created um, that was copied over to both, the, this version's file ended up being 1.3 gigabytes where this one's file ended up being 1.4 gigabytes. And I'm not into compression enough to know why that may be, but I found it curious. So this is what five years of work and a switch to a custom architecture brings you. Uh, and I think this just kind of goes to show the point of it, right? So Apple now, if you're using, especially if you're using things like Final Cut, you know, compressor, GarageBand, uh, you know, things like that, Apple writes the software, they write the operating system, they control the hardware, and all the way down to actually now, they actually control the central processing unit. Uh, and so it can build in all those features and nobody's gonna know better how to take advantage of all those features 
um, than Apple and their partners. Though, uh, I've been told and, and I've already seen um, some stuff online that if you're an Adobe user, um, Adobe worked really, really closely uh, with Apple on this, and so the Adobe suite of products is gonna work substantially better too. Uh, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and wrap up this video here, other than to say this thing is amazing, straight out of the box. I can't wait to see what it does, and frankly, I wanna wrap up this video so I can pull that card out of the camera and get to editing on my brand new computer for the first time. So, thank you for tuning in, uh, and we'll see you down the road. Well, greetings from my workspace. I'm recording this real quick uh, just at the end here with the camera built into the new MacBook Pro, just speaking into the microphones in the new MacBook Pro, saying the new MacBook Pro is a beast in editing. I just finished editing the video you just watched, and I can tell you this thing is amazing. Will I regret not buying the M1 Max down the line? Maybe, uh, but this thing is such a significant improvement over what I had. I think I'm gonna be happy with this one for a good long time. So if you can, get one yourself.